Here we're going to look at a classic example, which I actually just gave to my number theory class that I'm teaching. So let's look at some examples and some non-examples. So one is obviously of this form. It's 12 times zero plus one. 13 is 12 times one plus one. 37 is 12 times three plus one. 61 and 73 are also primes of this form. But notice that not everything of this form is a prime. 25 is equal to 12 times two plus one, 25 is obviously not prime, and 85 is 12 times seven plus one, and there's some in between there as well. So even though not all of them are prime, there are in fact infinitely many primes on the list of numbers of this form, and that's what we're gonna prove today. And before we get started, I wanna make a remark, and that is our proof is fairly simple, but it does require a few facts. And if you're more interested in understanding these facts more deeply, I urge you guys to check out my elementary number theory course. I've got actually two versions of it, one like older version when I just started YouTube and one newer version which I'm still uploading videos to right now. Okay, the two facts that we're gonna use have to do with when something is a perfect square. And this would be categorized under the notion of quadratic residues if you want a keyword to search. So if minus three is a perfect square modulo P, in other words, we've got a prime and mod that prime, negative three happens to be a perfect square. Well, then that means this prime must be one mod three. It's impossible for this prime to be equal to two mod three and allow minus three to be a perfect square. So let's just see an example of that happening real quick. This is obviously not a proof of this situation. A proof of this situation would be found either in a homework to the course that I am giving or in a lecture for the course that I'm giving. Some of these are in the videos that I've done. Okay, so if P is equal to 13, so notice that's most definitely one mod three, it's three times four plus one. Then negative three is equal to 10 in this case. Well, that's pretty clear because we're 13, but notice six squared is equal to 36. 36 is 10 more than 26, which means it's negative three mod our prime, which is 13 in this case. Then the other fact that we'll use is negative one is a perfect square modulo P, if and only if P is congruent to one mod four. So those are the only types of primes that allow for minus one to be a perfect square. Let's look at a quick example of that. So P equals 17, that's obviously one mod four. It's four times four plus one. And then if we look at four squared, we get 16, but 16 is one less than 17, which means it's minus one mod 17. So there's a situation showing that these two facts are true, at least in these cases. Okay, so now that we've set up the problem along with facts that we'll use, let's dive into the proof. Okay, now that we've provided some background along with a couple of facts, let's jump into the proof. And so just like we do with a lot of different infinitely many primes of the form type proofs, we're gonna do this by way of contradiction. So let's by way of contradiction, suppose that there are only finitely many primes of this form. So we can write that as follows, that all primes of the form 12K plus one are on this list P1, P2 up to PN. So there are only N primes of this form. Well, that's finitely many. Okay, great. And now we wanna set a number which I'll call x equal to the product of all of these. So these are standard first steps for primes of the form proofs. Now we're gonna consider a polynomial built out of x and we'll give that a name n. So let's maybe write that down. So we're gonna consider the following number. I said, we'll call it n. So that'll be, this will be x to the fourth minus x squared plus one. That seems like it might have come out of nowhere, but this will actually be really helpful. So next, since this is a natural number, it has a prime divisor. We know that because by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, every natural number can be factored into primes. So now let's take P bigger than three to be a prime 
such that P divides N. So I'll let you guys think about why we're able to pick this P to be bigger than three, but that shouldn't be too hard to think about. Okay, but notice if P divides N, that's the same thing as N is congruent to zero mod P using the notion of congruence modulo P. Okay. So where can we go from here? So now I'm gonna replace n with this polynomial thing. So we've got x to the fourth minus x squared plus one is congruent to zero modulo p. Now we wanna build this into a perfect square two different ways with two different numbers on the right hand side. And then that will restrict the values of p that are possible and then we can glue those together to show that P has to be a certain form. And in fact, we'll show that it has to be 12K plus one, and that will lead us to our contradiction. So we'll start by completing the square with parts of this object. So we can do that by first multiplying this whole thing by four. That'll give us four X to the fourth minus four X squared plus one plus three. Congruent to, negative, congruent to zero mod p. So I've split the plus four into plus one plus three, and that's because now I can take this stuff which is in orange and write it as a perfect square binomial, and then I can take this three and move it over to the other side of the congruence. So that's gonna give us two x squared minus one squared congruent to negative three modulo p. But it doesn't really matter that we have two x squared minus one over here. All that matters is that we have a perfect square on the left hand side. So we have a perfect square is congruent to negative three mod p. But then by our first fact, so I'll call it fact number one, that tells us the form of p. So that means p is congruent to one modulo three. In other words, p is equal to three m plus one for some value of m. So that's an equivalent definition of being congruent to one mod p. Okay, so let's maybe square this in purple and then we'll move on to the next bit of this. Now we're gonna take this congruence, rewrite it, and then do a little linear combination with a similar version to it. So I'll take this, I'll have x to the fourth minus x squared plus one congruent to zero mod p. Now I wanna multiply that by x and see what we have. So we'll have x to the sixth minus x to the fourth plus x squared congruent to zero modulo p. But now I can combine these and a bunch of stuff will cancel. In fact, what I want to do is add these two congruences. If I add these two congruences, this x to the fourth will cancel this x to the fourth. This x squared will cancel this x squared. And I'm left with x to the six plus one is congruent to zero mod p. In other words, x cubed squared is congruent to negative one modulo p. But by fact two, that tells us exactly what form P is. So it doesn't really matter that this is X cubed squared. All that matters is that we're squaring with something and getting minus one mod P. That tells us that P is congruent to one modulo four. Okay, so let's maybe put a green box around that. But now the fact that we have P is congruent to one mod three and one mod four. So in other words, purple box plus green box means that P is congruent to one mod 12. So having a remainder of one when dividing by four and simultaneously having a remainder of one when dividing by three means that you have a remainder of one when dividing by 12. That's the kind of thing you do at the beginning of learning modular arithmetic. Okay, but that means that P is of the form 12K plus one. Again, that's an equivalent definition of being congruent to one mod P.
Okay, so now let's take this fact, which we've just derived, bring it up here, and then we can build our contradiction. So on the last board, we found a prime P, which was of the form 12K plus one, that divided N. But let's notice by our assumption up here, which is towards the contradiction, we only have finitely many primes of the form 12K plus one, and they're from this list, P1, P2 up to Pn. So that means that the prime that we found must be on this list. In other words, we have P is equal to Pi for some I between one and N. And that's going to cause quite a bit of a problem. Now that brings us to two observations. So PI divides N. That's just rewriting this fact right here, which is what we started with, with P equals PI. And also PI divides X. Well, that's because X is a product of all of these primes, including PI. PI is somewhere in the middle there. But if PI divides X, that means that PI most definitely divides X to the fourth minus X squared, because that's a multiple of X. But we're about to have a problem, because if we put these two orange boxes together, we can see that PI divides one. So if something divides a number and another number, it divides any linear combination of that, those two numbers. So in other words, we have PI divides N minus X to the fourth minus X squared, which is the same thing as saying that PI divides the number one, which is the same thing as saying that PI is equal to one, but one is not prime. So that means we've reached a contradiction. Now we need to go up to the first place that we did not follow logic, but we made an assumption. And that means that assumption that we've made is false. And where's the first place? Really the only place that we've made an assumption and not followed logic. That is that all primes of the form 12K plus one are on that list. In other words, there are finitely many. That's false, which means there are in fact infinitely many primes of the form 12K plus one. And that's a good place to stop.